Hi guys, in this video I'm just going to show you how to use um, perpendicular lines in analytical geometry. Um, Alright, so what they sometimes do in analytical geometry is they want you to prove that two lines are perpendicular or they'll tell you that the two lines are perpendicular and you need to prove something else, a different unknown. Okay, so in this example here, they tell me they want me to prove that the blue line is perpendicular to the orange line. I know that the two gradients of perpendicular lines when multiplied give me negative one. Okay, so if I take the gradients of this line here and I multiply it by the gradients of the orange line, I should get negative one if they're perpendicular. Obviously, if they're not perpendicular, you're not going to get negative one. Okay, so if I now go and show, okay, so I can see that they're perpendicular, but I need to prove it. So I'm going to calculate the, the gradient of line AB using my gradient formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so my y's, if I subtract them, I'm going to go 4 minus minus 4, and my x's, so over negative 4 minus 3. Okay, so that's what I've got. And then if I calculate that, I get negative 8 over 7. Then I'm going to calculate the gradient of line CD. So again, I'm going to use my gradient formula. So my y's, I think I started from negative 3. So negative 3 minus 4 over negative 4 minus 4. So if I calculate those gradients, I'm going to get negative 7 over negative 8. And that simplifies to 7 over 8. Okay, you should already see that these fractions are opposite inverses of each other. Okay, so the one is negative, the one is positive, the one is 8 over 7, the other one is 7 over 8. Okay, that pretty much always happens if you're working with perpendicular. So you get two fractions that are the opposite inverses of each other. So now if I want to show and prove that they are perpendicular, I would go back to that formula that I've been given. So the gradient of the one line multiplied by the gradient of the other line is negative 1. I would substitute in the fractions that I've been given, what well, that I calculated. So 8 over negative 7 multiplied by 7 over 8 will, should be equal to negative 1, and it is equal to negative 1. So therefore, AB, line AB, is parallel to line CD. Okay, so they could ask you to prove that they're perpendicular. Another way that they could ask it is they could ask you, or they could tell you that they're perpendicular and ask you to prove something else. So have a look at this example. Okay, so they say line segment AB is perpendicular to line segment CD. This comes from your textbook. Um, if you're looking for it, it's number, it's D2 in your textbook of exercise 3. Okay, so line segment AB is perpendicular to line segment CD. So they already tell you that they're perpendicular. So you should already be thinking about this formula. They give you A and they give you half of B, so there's an unknown there. They give you C and they give you D, and then they ask you to calculate the value of B. Okay, so if I can if I'm if I'm working with perpendicular, I'm working with gradients. So I can first work out gradients. So I'm going to start by working out the gradients of C D because there's no unknowns there. Okay, so if I go and work out the gradients of CD, I'm going to get 2. Then, if I were to try and calculate the, the gradient of AB, here's what I'm going to have. Okay, so I kind of can't work out the gradient of AB because I've got an unknown. Okay, so I have to try something else. Okay, and the thing that you can work with is this formula here. Okay, so if I bring that formula down, I can substitute the gradients of CD, which is 2. I know that the gradient of AB multiplied by 2 should give me negative 1, right? So because there's multiplication here, if I divide through by 2, I'm going to get the gradient of AB is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, so I know that the gradient of AB is equal to negative 1 half. I also know that the gradient of AB is equal to 3 over negative 5 minus B. So I can equate those because both of them are the gradient of AB. Okay, so I can say that this whole thing should eventually actually be equal to negative 1 half. Okay, so those two gradients should be equal to each other. They should both be negative a half. If I'm now trying to calculate the unknown B, the easiest thing, look, you could try and find an LCD, okay, but the easiest thing to do is because I'm dividing through by negative 5 minus B, I'm going to multiply by negative 5 minus B, and because I'm dividing through by 2 here, I'm going to multiply by 2 on the left-hand side. So you basically just cross-multiply. Uh, then you're going to multiply, so 3 times 2 will give me 6. Distribute in your negative 1. And that's what you're going to get. And now I can calculate B by taking the 5 over and subtracting it, which is going to give me 1. 
Okay, so they might ask you to prove that they're perpendicular, then you'll have to calculate the two gradients and show that when you multiply them together, you get negative one. Or they will tell you that they're perpendicular and you'll have to calculate one of the points. So I'm just going to quickly recap what I've just done. So they gave me C and D so I could calculate the gradient there. They gave me A, but they didn't give me B, but I calculated as far as I could get to. All right, so I calculated as much as I could and then I was stuck at this point here. Then I went to my formula. So my formula, I know for perpendicular, the gradient of one um, line multiplied by the gradient of the other line is equal to negative one. I already had calculated CD, which I substituted in. Then I just divided through by that so I could get my gradient of AB. Once I had my gradient of AB here, and I have a gradient of AB here, Obviously, the gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of AB, so I equated them. I, I cross-multiplied so that I could get rid of my denominators, and once I had that, I just solved for B. Um, I hope that helps.